what kind of spreads do you get at when you go eat at the actual mansion? Oh, is it like a lobster every night or what? Literally, it's whatever you want. They have a chef on staff 24 hours a day, and it that sounds great, and it is great. I'm not going to complain about a homemade meal because I don't cook it. You know, I really don't, bring, <laughs> I don't cook, I don't clean, I bring nothing to the table. But um, it's yourself. actually really overwhelming because there is no menu. And it's just like, what do you want? What do you feel like having? <laughs> like, uh, and there's just like dessert. There's like, there's like drawers with just fresh cookies and and the brownies pies and, and pies. Cake. And so, how do you keep in shape then? There's a gym there. There is oh. a gym there. <laughs> and because I, I, it actually becomes so overwhelming trying to pick something. I end up ordering the exact same thing every, every single day. Every single day, I usually yes. eat either it's two things. Either if I'm in the mood for a salad, I get you know a, the salad with the exact same toppings <laughs> every time, or I get a fried egg sandwich. It's right. the same thing every day. Fried that makes me feel so much better about myself. Oh. <laughs> it's like my favorite meal: it's like toasted white bread, mayo, bacon, lettuce, tomato. You and have to fried be eggs. specific. Like, oh, what do you want on that salad? What kind of lettuce do you want? What well, kind I'd of like bre- a carrots. I like oh my cucumbers. Gosh. I'd like this kind of cheese. It's yeah because they make everything like to order. Wow! So yes, it's a it's a great, it's amazing, but it's a little bit overwelming to pick. I can imagine. Just, <laughs> it's, I'm overwhelmed just it's thinking about it. Always delicious. <laughs> <laughs> always good. Well, another getting back to the centerfold thing. How much do you actually get paid for that pictorial? Every centerfold is is twenty five thousand for the actual centerfold, and it's been uh-huh. that same price from. I mean, and I remember everything else is extra on top of that. You that what do you mean by each like each individual thing, promotion. appearance, different pictures? Okay, that you this do, crown stuff like campaign that. that we're doing. Each one of those, you know, they they'll send the girl an email and say, you know, are you available on this day at this time? This is the rate, and you are free okay. to that yes or no. And that varies depending on what the job is, how long the hours are, and girls are free to work as little or as much as they want. Now, is that the only way you can get additional work after after doing this? It's, yes. Okay. So they reach out to you. You can't say, oh, hey, you can, so-and-so, would you like me to work for you? How well, does no, that work? I mean, we, a lot of, we do other work, too. Like, it's not just Playboy. We can work with other agents and to do okay. other acting, modeling, hosting, all that kind of stuff. It's not just Playboy. Playboy, then, after you work with Playboy, you just it becomes an aspect of your of your work if you want to work in entertainment. Oh, I'm going to do this for Playboy this time. I mean, obviously, we can't go do anything that, like, you know, counteracts Playboy or, you know, we don't want to go and work for any kind of magazine never like do that. But, right, and like that. <laughs> but we do other work, and it's just Playboy then can call and ask us if we want to do something for them and that sort of thing. Okay. And what do, what would you say to the people who say that Playboy is that kind of publication that um, demoralizes women? I don't agree with that at all. I, I feel like Playboy's photos, which is, like I just said, I would never go and do something like Hustler. There's a very different, um, I feel like Playboy's photos are like art. I mean, I don't feel like many people have a problem with to be in a magazine. Marilyn Monroe. I mean, she was the first centerfold in 1953, and she's in, an icon now. Right. Uh, most one of the most recognizable women, I think, in the world. Her photos, and I mean, I think nowadays most people I th- find it an honor. You know, I know, I know, I do. I mean, like we choose to be in the magazine. If if we're selected, we don't. It's not like we're forced to be in the magazine. Yeah. So how is it like demoralizing us when we want to do it? We're proud of it. We're you know, it, they're be, they take beautiful pictures, and it's an honor. I mean, Hef says it's the twelve most beautiful women that he finds for that year. So it's I mean, it's, it's a, nothing it's but a an honor. Pretty exclusive club because again, there's only twelve in the world. So when you think about that, since 1953, that's 600 and something in the world. Well, then other women will also say years. that, like my mom, for one, says that it, it objectifies women. No, um, Hef always says it's a celebration of women. Right. Well, he would know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we're not, you know, in, if you look at Playboy, we're not taking pictures like maybe some of the hustlers and penthouse and that sort There's of thing. No with like our legs are spread head. open, and, <laughs> and you can. It's there. It's done very classy. You weren't doing and, a split in your centerfold. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot. I forgot. I was the one for. I did do it. So no. Um, it's the the pictures are very classy, and um, yeah, I mean, it's they're themed like they're they're. It's all about lighting, and and really is art. As far as you know, Playboy is concerned, and the photographers, and um, so no, I don't, I don't agree with that at all. Everyone's a, a, you know entitled to their own opinion, of course. I don't really care what people like that think. How much airbrushing goes into it? Actually, people—that's the first thing they ask when they see the picture, or you know, they'll say, "Oh, well, your body doesn't really look that." It's airbrushing. Actually, it's mostly lighting. Right. They spend <laughs> oh, the lighting, it is, is lighting, and I did not know that until I went because when I found out, you know, that I was going to be shooting my centerfold, I had about a month's notice. 
And I did not know what to expect. I'd never been to the Playboy Mansion. I was 30 years old, a redhead. And in my mind, I thought they're 19 and blonde. <laughs> and they look, you know, I was like, they're, how can I can't compete or compare. Well, I don't know what they're going to be expecting of me out there in Hollywood. You know, I was lived in Florida. I was a police officer working the night shift. It wasn't something that I'd ever even crossed my mind. So literally, I worked out twice a day. Two hours a day, twice a day, and lost 10 pounds in a month because I thought I had to be, you know, I didn't know what. I, didn't, I thought I had to comp- compete with 19-year-old bodies, you know, right. and it's not a, at all the case. One, well, I did ask them for a bottle of champagne to get me through the shoot because I'd never done nude modeling. <laughs> so, but by the end, when it comes up on the screen as you're watching it, but they, they spend so much money and so much time in the lighting. It's actually an, an art form. The lighting is outstanding that when it came up on the screen, which obviously there's no airbrushing as it, if it's just coming up, I was like, that's not my butt. I've seen my butt. It looks nothing like that, you know? And then I felt really pretty. I felt really good. As I was like, he's, so after about 600 or so photos that he'd taken, he's like, I think we've got enough. And here I am, a, a bottle of champagne to soothe my nerves. And seeing the pictures come up, I was telling him, don't stop. I think we could do some more. What about yeah. <laughs> striking poses? Because I, I felt beautiful. And it really was, it's the lighting before they, and then they take out little things. Like, for example, Hef doesn't like when there's tattoos in the photos. Right. So they'll take those out right. in, really? in airbrushing, the air quotes I'm doing, because that's the those are the kind of things that they do in air, in the Photoshop, not okay. necessarily changing your body. Okay. Contrary to popular belief, Hef is really, he really likes a lot of naturalness of women. You know, I mean, obviously a lot of women have like fake breasts and stuff and those are beautiful, but That's he likes... the he, norm these days, I feel like. Yeah. He, he likes women that are, you know, he doesn't want stick figure, you yep. know, girls in there. He he likes it to be natural and beautiful and, and really... It, it about the beauty of the woman and in a womanly shape. And so, I mean, it's that's what it's about that for him. That was one of the things I was most pleasantly surprised after I, you know, fretted about needing to look like I did when I was 19, you know, losing 10 pounds in a month. No one asked me to do that. I did that on my own. And then once I got there, he welcomes, if you look at each interfold, they're all completely different shapes, sizes, ethnicities, mm-hmm. you know, natural breasts, fake breasts. You know, I'm five nine. The girl bef- the month before me was ninety. I'm five nine and one hundred and thirty, and she was like five four and ninety five pounds. Like it's it, such a variety, and no, never once since I've worked there had they ever, especially being in Hollywood, have they ever said to lose weight or wow, that's any, surprising. Anything like that? Nothing at all. They they he accepts each individual as they were like in their centerfold. So he presents something for everyone, and that was I think one of the things I was most mm-hmm. pleasantly surprised. To discover. So, what's the best thing that you've experienced as being a playmate? Everything, <laughs> really, every part of it. I mean, we've we can we travel the world. Um, you know, with with Playboy, we it's an honor to be named one of the most beautiful women in the world, and that's what Playboy is. You know, to to most people, um, we get to meet amazing amazing other people. We've met a lot of celebrities, obviously, and do events like this and campaigns like this one with Seagrams and. I mean, it's pretty, everything about it, I think. Yes, it was, it, it's funny um, that I followed one dream, which was to be on The Amazing Race. I watched that. And it's funny how everything in life is about timing because I watched that show for 14 seasons, uh, 13 seasons before I actually applied. I was on season 14. So that was a good eight years into the history of the show. Wow. And I'd always be at cheerleading practice and, and at school and trying to convince other girls to, to be my partner. We can do this. Let's go on the show. But never actually did it. And then one day I said... I'm going to just apply. They would probably never watch my tape. But if I don't, at least send it in. I sent it on the application deadline day. And that was a dream of mine was to be on that show. And it's funny how following that dream led to some another dream I didn't even know I had, but I have now been living for the past two years. It's been a complete dream and not one that I even knew I had. And that's what I'd say that my life now is like a dream. And how many people can say they personally know an icon? And Hugh Hefner is one of the last living icons. And we both personally know him on a first name basis. I mean, how many people can say that? 